Well, my name's Mark Faulkner. Um, I've been on the street about nine years, on and off, you know, in and out of hostels and all around the country. I want to settle down, but through the life that I've led, you know, I just can't. I went through that rebellious stage a bit late, you know, when I was a teenager. I went through it sort of the last year of school. I wanted to do things that I couldn't do, <laughs> and I did them. And ever since then, really, I've had good chances, but I was that young, you know, I just didn't take them, I didn't see them. I wish I knew then what I know now. I don't know, I'd love to have that chance <laughs> and lead a normal life. And the epilepsy doesn't help either. And the stress and lack of sleep are the two main things that fetch the fits on. Now I get stressed up a lot, <laughs> and you know, and I don't get much sleep. <laughs> so really, the two main things that fetch them on are effect, are brought on by homelessness. There's so many disabled people that are homeless. I mean, a lot of the people that are homeless and they're on sickness benefit, I'll admit that's usually due to alcoholism. But that's a lot of the time being from being on the street. I mean, you know, what else do they spend, you know, what else do they do? When I first came to London, that's when I started sleeping in Topshop. Where I sleep, it's not my pitch, not for begging or anything, it's just where I sleep. And because it's an ideal step, because it's on a slant, I and mean, when the rain goes in, it comes goes straight back down onto the path again, so I don't get wet. You know, and, and the people in the shop have got to know me. I mean, not by name, but you know, they don't wake me up until about ten minutes before the shop opens now, because they know that I'm not one of these that will, when they when they get woken up, say, oh, can I just have ten minutes just to wake up? You know. They know that I just get up and I come down to the day centre. People have stopped and asked me, like, if you're on the street, how come you're so clean, you know? They, they expect you to be a tramp. If you're not a tramp, you know, then you're not a homeless person, you know? You're just one of these that's got somewhere to live and you're coming out just to make some money. But that's not true. And people have got to realise that. I've heard so many people talk about London, you know, life on the streets up the West End and that, and I've never been to London in my life. And I just had to come up to see what it was like, you know, to see if they were lying or see if it was true and, and I came up and this was the London Connection, this was the first place I came to. Because everyone knew about it, this was where everyone pointed me to. You know, it's true what people were saying and it's just totally different from any other town or city, you know, in its own way. And when I leave I keep saying I'm not coming back to London again, you know, but I always end up back here and I mean but it's more violent than anywhere else. There's, you know, there's more drugs going around than any other town or city that I've been to. And, well, there's more of everything. <laughs> I don't know, it's, you know, it's just the, the same as any other town or city, but it's more. More people walking past every minute and, I don't know, people that I call normal people. <laughs> But thinking about it, I'm no different to them. I'm just, the only difference is that I'm homeless. I feel I can't live on my own because of fits. You know, if, if I had a fit and fell on my back, I could be very dangerous and basically I could choke, you know, I could choke. I went to the council and applied for a place, but I told them my situation and I said I wanted a two-bedroom flat that I could share with a friend because of my fits. And they ended up offering me a one-bedroom one. That's all they'd give me. They said, we're not going to offer you anything else because we've offered you this. You either take it or, you know, go back on the street, basically. So I 
go back on the street. If you're cold, you're cold by choice, from what I've seen. As long as you've got cardboard underneath when you're sleeping as well, you know, that is essential. I mean, I, I didn't realise that till about a few years ago, you know, and I was freezing and <laughs> I started, you know, I'm wondering why everyone's using cardboard and, and I just couldn't believe that how it keeps you warm, but it does. I'm more comfortable most times sleeping out than what I am in a bed. A lot of the people choose to sleep on the streets because they spend so much time on the streets. That's how they that's where they're comfortable. Nowadays, in the last few years, they've started opening up an awful lot of um, cold weather shelters. I mean, they get full up very quick. Me myself, I've got used to the weather, and I mean, I did just come out of hospital two days ago for pneumonia, but that was because I left the hospital and I think my body had got too used to having a bed. I got very worried when they said it was pneumonia because I'm thinking like, well, people die from that. <laughs> There's no reason to be cold, really. There's so many, you know, scarves and that going around, what crisis give out and, I mean, they come down in a van down the Strand every two weeks and you can order what you want, you know. Not the make of the clothes, but you can order, you know, what you need and they'll give it to you the day after. What would you like? Um, well, there's always food available, you know, or, you know, there's always day centres. And you only have to ask someone that's on the street as well, because most people stick together on the street. You know, about 90% of them are OK. I always feel safe on the strand because, like, you know, there's always people walking up and down there three, four o'clock in the morning, especially like Thursday, Friday and Saturday nights, you know, the weekend and, well, you know, I, I just feel safe because of that. I think if I have a fit, then people, especially on them nights, are going to be merry and <laughs> they'd be in the right mood, you know. They'll sort of phone an ambulance or at least put me in the recovery position. Sometimes when I have epileptic fits and I fall on the floor, you know, I wake up and no one's phoned an ambulance or anything, they're just walking around me. And, you know, they just see me on the floor, they see me on the floor, they walk around me deliberately, you know, and then they're, what they're probably thinking is that I'm just an alcoholic and I've just fallen on the floor drunk, you know, and I'm not worth helping. Even if I was an alcoholic and I was on the floor and, you know, drunk, I'm still a person. How long does it take to phone an ambulance? I mean, this is London, but 90% of the people have got a mobile with them anyway, you know? 999. <laughs> How long does it take? I totally do not know where I'll be in five years' time. Th that's never come into my head before. It's, <laughs> it's uh... Yeah, like I said, I'm, at the moment, I'm thinking of today. You know, tomorrow's another day. Five years' time is, well, five years' time. It's 